Arthur Miller's Clara, a play which he wrote in 1987 as a part of a, a double bill called uh, Danger Memory. As we were talking about it yesterday, Danger Memory was a double bill. A double bill is a, um, a set of plays uh, which is staged on the same day. So, double <coughs> the word suggests two, a set of two plays. Uh, the plays are staged on the same day, one after the other. Okay. So, Clara and I cannot remember um, anything were staged together uh, in 1987. Uh, Clara has two principal dramatist personae, Albert Kroll and uh, uh, Lieutenant Detective Fine. Now, let us see what happens in Clara. Living room of Clara Trolls apartment office, all the action is confined to a small lighted down stage, lighted area down stage. So, Arthur Miller is giving us the stage directions here. Uh, it is an apartment come office, the, uh, uh, there is a, a dim light in the uh, on the stage. Beyond it are suggestions of the room, which in a few feet are swiftly lost in the surrounding darkness. So, darkness becomes a major symbol of the play. Okay. So, in, at the beginning, at the uh, beginning itself, the playwright tells us there is uh, plenty of darkness on stage. What does it mean? We will see. A couple of men are heard quietly talking in what is probably an adjoining room, then silence. A man is lying on the floor with one resist, one arm resting over his eyes. He is in a suit and top coat and his overturned hat lies nearby. He is Albert Kroll. Okay. Albert Kroll is found. So, you can imagine, you can picturize the scene. The one man is lying on the floor. Uh, he is in a overcoat. He is in an overcoat and um, uh, his uh, overturned hat lies nearby. He is Albert Kroll. So, detective lieutenant uh, Fine enters from the darkness carrying a file drawer which he sets on a small table beside a chair and sits. The reflection of a camera flash illuminates the darkness for a second. Um, yesterday, we were talking about how uh, during especially during his later plays, Arthur Miller got interested, he got preoccupied with the theme of memory. And you would remember that we were talking about this aspect yesterday, that uh, Clara and I cannot remember anything, both are memory plays, as is um, one of his very uh, recent plays, Mr. Peter's Connections. So, Miller during his last days became increasingly preoccupied with the idea of memory as a construct. So, what can memory do to people? That is what we are uh, so, um, supposed to understand here. So, reflection of a camera flash illuminates the darkness for a second. Once settled in his chair, fine glances down at Crawl. Now, uh, look at the stage direction. Reflection of a camera flash. What, call, uh, what kind of a uh, set or setup or setting could this be? A camera flash may and you have the presence of a detective. So, maybe it is a scene of crime. Okay. So, that is the idea uh, that is put forward. Uh, then, pulls a folder from the file and opens it, removing letter after letter, which he quickly scans. Again, little bursts of quiet conversation from the adjoining room and silence. Okay. Um, if you remember, we have also done how um, extensively Harold Pinter deals with the idea of silence, images of silence. And again, in Arthur Miller also, we find um, silence forms a very important part, especially of this play. A loud saxophone, John Coltrane. John Coltrane uh, is a le legendary uh, musician. So, his piece, his work splits the air. Fine turns in his chair and shouts upstage. Somebody is playing a record and detective Fine is disturbed. 
fine, hey, who is doing that? Shut it off, the record stops. Tyranny, is that you? Out of the darkness upstage, Tyranny, a young cop, enters, record envelopes under his arm. Tyranny, sorry, Lieutenant, I happen to touch the button on the turntable. Fine, I want Douglas to dust that record for prints, they may have been playing it. It is okay, I did not touch the record, she must have been in the peace corps, there is a citation on her office wall. Now, who is this she? We still do not know, but then the play is very significantly titled Clara. Okay. Clara is a girl's name and there, there is a reference to a girl, she must have done that, she was, uh, she must have been in the Peace Corps, she was an avid uh, admirer of music, there is John Coltrane um, as part of her music collection. So, there is a citation on her office wall, fine, uh, returning to the file, I know. By the way, who is going to feed the uh, uh, budgie in the kitchen? That bird in the cage, you want it, I mean it is going to die. It is okay, steal it, Tiny turns to leave, but nobody has to feed those phonograph records, a flash bulb in the dimness for the upstage. She had quite a collection here. Tiny exits, fine scans letter after letter, it is not getting him anywhere. So, perhaps he is on a trail, he is trying to crack a case, he is not getting any leads. He sits back in the chair, is staring ahead, Kroll moves his arm, fine turns, looks down at him. How are you coming Mr. Kroll? Kroll is silent. You hearing me now? Kroll manages to get up on his elbows, feeling any better? Effect, upstage in darkness an exploding flash illuminates for a subliminal instant in the air. So, this is the second time we have the image of a camera flashing um, over the two men, a color photo of the bloody body of a partially stripped woman. So, you see this is the, this is a very uh, an effective um, stage effect. Now, uh, you are not told anything, but uh, you find a woman's body, a partially stripped woman's body lying up there and there is a camera flashing. So, perhaps now uh, we can infer that it is a scene, it is a murder scene, it is a scene of a crime and it the crime is murder. I cannot understand why I did not think of it. She may be gone skiing somewhere, fine, a pause and with a gesture toward upstage. You have seen her, have not you? Kroll now sits up completely staring. You know who I am now? The lieutenant. Effect, a color photo of a hand wound appears overhead, lasting a millisecond or so. So, uh, Miller is not still showing us clearly whose uh, dead body it is. First, we find a picture, it is not even a body, it is a, a color photograph okay, of a body. Then, you have a hand, we still do not have any name for this body. Why am I seeing the pictures? They are photographing the body Polaroids. We will skip a bit and we will go on to page 224. Um, Time did you say? Fine, 105. Crawl smiles. Do not you ever look at your watch? Fine, do not have to. You know who I am now? Uh, Crawl, oh sure, sorry, I mixed you up with Bert, but you are almost the spitting image, even the way you sit with your legs crossed and the same kind of attitude. So, memory again, as we have been talking about, now uh, detective fine triggers off some old memories in Albert Kroll and he associates him with someone called Bert. And Bert, we never see him on stage, but he is a very important part in Kroll's life, that is what he is talking about. So, with every, with each revelation, some memory, some part of uh, uh, memory gets triggered off 
and he is reminded of someone else ok and that is how the play unfolds. So, it is a very uniquely con, uh, structured constructed play in uh, Miller's works because so far we, we have never had any play uh, constructed this way in any or maybe or any of his earlier works ok. So, we have uh, we will be looking at the prime examples and you will find that yes Clara is quite unique uh, as far as technique is concerned. Bert and I, I am going back our ways now, but we were so damn close for years and years. One morning out of the blue, this was after I had been doing all this landscaping for at least 10 years and never a contract, a handshake and that is that. Now, see how he gets uh, uh, distracted. He, he starts with talking about Bert and he says that Albert Kroll reminds him of his friend Bert and then he says that he, he is in some kind of a, a, a kind of a business landscaping and he has always believed in conducting business based on emotional relationship. So, what he says I never had a contract with anyone just a handshake and that is that and that is the way I conducted my business that says a lot about the kind of man Albert Kroll is. And I show up on this particular Monday morning with my crew and my tractors and he comes out and says what are you doing Albert and I say we are going to start the grading. He has put up these uh, 20, 30 houses you see and he says I got somebody else Albert I am sorry and that was that completely out of the blue man was practically my best friend. Fine, what is the point of that story Mr. Kroll? Uh, I, I do not know, I guess I am just talking is that you just cannot ever let yourself rely on anything staying the way it is, things change that is what. Perhaps Albert is unable to come to terms with uh, the recent changes in his life. He is present at a murder scene and uh, there is a dead body somewhere the, po the police is uh, investigating the case. Uh, Kroll seems to have a uh, temporary lapse of memory, but uh, what he can recall are uh, the uh, are older incidents, incidents which happened much before this particular murder. So, he starts off with talking about Birch. So, what is the point of story? I do not know. I guess I am just talking. It is that you cannot ever let yourself rely on anything staying the way it is. He suddenly cries out in paroxysms of horror and clamps his hands over his eyes and continues crying out with great heaves of breath. Pine does not move, watching him as gradually his cries weaken and he goes silent. Fine, it is up to you, but in my experience, it is generally better to talk about it. What you cannot chase, you had better learn, better face or it will start chasing. You know what I mean? I would appreciate if we could talk right now, because whoever did this has a big head start on me and I would like very much to catch up with him. Uh, so, we, we need your help in sol solving this mystery, mystery of this case. I think she was robbed once before, uh, no robbery this time. No, I remember now that is right. Uh, fine, there are two cups on the stove with tea bags and the kettle is me melted. Uh, there was a fight, but no sign of forced entry and there is still over a hundred dollars in her pocketbook and the TV and the rest all untouched. It was somebody she was making tea for. You with me? You, you following me? There was no forced entry. Somebody came. Some There was a fight, but she let the person uh, enter the house. So, uh, it was not breaking and entering. It was uh, very much a uh, person who was familiar to her, uh, who was known to her. Yeah, yeah me, making tea for ha, Have I called my wife? Not to my knowledge. Would you like me to? Oh, no, no, please. I will do it. Uh, go ahead. I can talk. Someone uh, she was making a tea for? Fine. You are clear about what is happened, right? After all, it starts to slip away now and then. See, he is in a state of shock. He cannot uh, 
comprehend the situation completely and perhaps psychologically he is in such a state that he is unable to come to terms with uh, the crime. So, perhaps that has caused, uh, caused this uh, uh, you know, lapse of memory. Try to hold on to it, Clara has been attacked and murdered, so now it says, Clara has been attacked and murdered and this is the first time we hear the word Clara be spoken aloud. So, Clara has been attacked and murdered, so now it all connects. These photographs we see of, you know, this bloodied hand, this bloodied body, they belong to Clara. The records, you know, at the scene of crime, you have the records, um, you have uh, a citation, they all belong to Clara. I have no idea. Funny, I was in the middle of a zoning board meeting. He is in landscaping, remember? Last night, I guess, e yeah, last night, and I got this sudden feeling of I felt lonely for her. So, I called here when I got home, and there was no answer. So, there was a kind of telepathy father and daughter, Albert Kroll, Clara Kroll. Okay, so he, <coughs> he, he just had some kind of a premonition that something is wrong somewhere and he just pays her a visit. So, I called here when I got home then there was no answer and this morning Saint Francis had not heard from her either. Um, Saint Francis is the name of the uh, 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 this reformatory she works for. She is a social activist, she is a social worker and she works for an organization, organization called Saint Francis. She is on the staff there. Not that we have been touched that often, but uh, not that we have been in touch that often, but you know with this kind of a neighborhood I decided to come down. Bad, bad, fine straightening up, nothing, just psychosomatic. I have been trying to decide whether to retire, my body seems to be voting. What will you do? Uh, what they all do, sit looking at the ocean somewhere, wondering where my life went. What was her idea moving into an area like this? Do you know? So, Fine has his own story. Uh, Fine, uh, the way he comes across, is a very practical, very down to earth kind of a person, but he has, uh, he is also aging. He is around the same age as Crawl, and now he wants uh, to retire because perhaps he has seen enough of uh, crimes and murders and he is tired. He also, he, uh, physically he is not keeping uh, very well. He wants to retire, wondering where my life went. It has not been, according to him, a very successful, a very eventful life and he is not happy. What was her idea moving into an area like this? Do you know? So, per, the, this constant reference uh, to uh, the neighborhood, perhaps this is one of the most toughest neighborhoods of uh, New York, perhaps this is one of the most uh, crime infested area of new of the city, perhaps that is what is being talked about. Um, oh, uh, it goes back a long way with her. She was hardly 15, 16 when she got this job going into back alleys in Poughkeepsie all hours of the night, teaching these women how to take care of children, nutrition so on. Just never knew what fear was, so that was Clara. Even when she was a teenager, she started getting involved in uh, all kinds of social activities. She liked to uh, train the, or uh, perhaps you try to, uh, she tried to be in touch with those people, with the underprivileged, with those who are not as fortunate as her. Teaching women how to take care of children, teaching them about nutrition. So, um, she, she is a social worker and this is what she was always interested in. Just never knew what fear was. The very fact that she chose to work uh, with uh, those people who had a crime record. She, she was never afraid of going to those places where uh, even men would be scared to go. But Clara knew, uh, knew no fear. Fine. I notice that there is only one lock on the door, which is uh, extremely courageous. There is only one lock on the door because this is a tough neighborhood. So, there should be more locks, that is what he means. 
I am surprised there is that one, because uh, uh, Clara normally would not have even one lock. Even as a child, this great big dog came charging down the street, snarling, snapping, people running into their houses. They thought he was rabid maybe, and there is Clara playing in the front yard with her doll and just holds out her hand and that dog stopped in his tracks, quieted right down and just sat. Okay, that is Clara, even as a child, she was an extremely brave child, a very courageous child. Uh, and this is an example, there was a rabbit dog attack, attacking uh, the neighborhood and she just silenced the dog, with just by just holding out her hand. Clara enters out of the darkness, holding up a bird cage and extending one finger, crosses and vanishes. Now, this is interesting, suddenly you see Clara. Now, this is not a ghost, perhaps this is what, uh, this is the way the father chooses to remember his daughter. So, she comes holding up a bird cage. Now, what could be the symbol, the, because the uh, uh, bird cage as a motif is repeated several times during the play. So, bird cage and this is Clara's first appearance holding a There would be many more such appearances. Remember, this is not a ghost, this is not a ghost play at all. This is um, a murder mystery and father unable to recollect um, things about Clara. He, he can go back in time, but he cannot remember immediate details, uh, that is because of the sudden shock. And now, he sees Clara approaching him, that is in his mind's eye. He, uh, that is the way he sees Clara. Crawl, uh, I do not think so, uh, uh, maybe we could get somebody to, one of the cops wanted it, good. Same thing with that bird, always had to have a bird and that is Clara, because she has to have, she had to have a bird and lets them out and holds out her finger and they come right back and she pops them into the cage. I do not know where she gets that from, now, this is significant. Um, if Crawl uh, um, is unable to come to terms with Clara's murder. Notice the way he keeps on referring to her in the present tense as if she is still alive. You say, I have not called my wife, uh, fine, you have been lying there since I came in. How do you feel you think you could answer a few questions? I simply cannot believe it, she loves everybody. Fine glancing about, it has that atmosphere. She never seems to have been married, is that right? Crawl. Married? No, uh, no. Something you want to say? No, no, I thought I heard voices. There is a man dusting for fingerprints. You are clear now about uh, who I am and where you are, right? Uh, the detective is not very sure about Crawl's state of mind. Uh, perhaps uh, he, uh, Crawl has been having these uh, blackouts very frequently. So, uh, the detective wants to ensure whether Crawl recognizes him. Crawl, and your name again, I am sorry, uh, sorry, he forgets his name, he has just been told his name. Fine, and that is all right. Lou Fine, oh, that is why my friend was Bert Fine. So, they share the detective as well as his uh, best friend, who is not his friend anymore. They both share the same. Uh, name, uh, uh, the same surname, fine. How old was Clara, by the way? Uh, Troll, she is, let us see, uh, fine was. Crawl, what? She was. So, perhaps fine is now trying to, uh, with this uh, change of attitude, he wants to uh, pound this fact home that uh, Crawl should recognize that Crawl, uh, Clara is dead. Crawl, oh yes, God. 28 last year. Clara enters, clo closing the door of a cage in which there is now a bird. She pauses behind Crawl and a look of intense love passes over a sublime smile on her face and she moves away in the darkness. This is Clara's second appearance. This is the way the father chooses to remember his daughter. She has, she is still, she is still having the uh, uh, 
the bird cage. She now closes the door of the cage. She smiles at her father, and there is a look of intense love on her face. So that's. That is the father daughter relationship and while we are at it, let me also tell you that uh, um, yesterday while, while uh, discussing the thematic concerns in Arthur Miller, we talked about how family relationships Were, uh, always form the crux of most Miller's plays, <coughs> but family rela relationship between whom, Re relationships with whom. So, you had father, son, you have brother, brother and perhaps you had mother and son as you have seen in death of a salesman, all my son. But Clara happens to be the only play of uh, Arthur Miller, at least till 1987, which tackles a father daughter relationship. This is very important to remember. So, Clara can be, Clara is noticed especially for the way Miller tackled the father daughter relationship. And this was the first time he uh, handled this in 1987 when Clara was written and subsequently daughters form an important part in his plays. Then we also have Mr. Peter's connections. And one of his last plays, Resurrection. where daughters play an important part. Otherwise, in all of his previous plays, there is no daughter. There has never been any daughter in Miller's plays at all till Clara. And what could have, uh, what uh, I, uh, this change, uh, what could have brought about this change, that is very important to uh, think about, because see, Miller had two children from his first marriage. But uh, when he married um, Inge Morath after uh, uh, the failure of his marriage with uh, Marilyn Munro, he had a daughter, Rebecca. And most of his later plays, you find uh, in most of his later plays, you find hints of Rebecca. So, even in Clara, Clara by, by writing Clara, perhaps Miller was trying to um, dig into uh, the worst fears a father can have about a daughter who lives independently. Because that was the time when Reb Rebecca was uh, growing up, she was extremely rebellious, she was living on her own. So, this could have prompted Miller to write this play. So, uh, a change in his own personal life and this which is reflected in his plays also. Okay, going back page 227, uh, uh, look Mr. Crawl, if I am going to get anywhere, Crawl, no, no please, I am with you. It is just so unreal to me that I, I understand, uh, but every minute counts in a thing like this. Now, what can you tell me about Clara? For instance, these uh, files do not indicate any female patients, because Clara is in the, uh, Clara's job is uh, to um, rehabilitate people who are suffering from some kind of a mental disorder. And uh, the detective uh, points out that uh, there, are, there are no female patients. Oh, um, well, uh, she was mainly interested in prisoner rehabilitation. Uh, she worked for three years in Botsford. Botsford Penitentiary and also Mount Carmel. Ah, ah good, that is good information. And then I suppose she worked with these men after they got out. So, uh, the nature of her work is also extremely dangerous. She works for the rehabilitation of prisoners. Uh, so, she has worked for years in uh, 
uh, several kinds of pen, several different penitentiaries, reformatories, okay, prisons, which also uh, act, which which are, which are also um, reformatories. So she has been working there. And then I suppose she worked with these men after they got out. Oh yes, helped a lot of them. Had wonderful letters from them. They idolized her. So all these prisoners, she try, did her best to rehabilitate them, and she had a very good relationship with them. I can imagine you sound very proud of her. Now this is again a very telling comment. You are very proud of her. Um, the uh, uh, misunderstand. Whenever Clara does any uh, act of bravery or courage, it is reflected in Kroll's attitude. So, remember that uh, scene where he talks about uh, how proud he was when Clara uh, tamed a wild dog. And the same way now when he talks about how, uh, what a major role she played in um, helping these dangerous criminals uh, get rehabilitated and he is extremely proud of that. So, it say, tells us a lot about the father daughter relationship, the father's attitude, perhaps he is proud of the fact and therefore, she wants to make her father more proud of her and therefore, this uh, tendency to uh, get involved in all kinds of uh, dangerous acts and dangerous missions. Oh, I guess so, I just um, you just cannot help worrying about her that is all. Well, you had reason. Um, did you kill your daughter, Mr. Kroll? What? I just wanted you to notice how clean and direct that answer was. Can you feel it? Sorry if I shocked you, but um, why do not you try to give me clean direct answers like that? Yeah, so, please answer me in yes or no, we are running out of time. So, therefore, he wants to shock him out of his wits and ask him point blank, did you kill your daughter? And he said, of course not. And he said, why do not you give me answers like Yes in no, yes and no. Crawl, I am not trying to, I realize you are all upset. Good God, I have to call my wife. Why would not I be upset? It is amazing the way you say, uh, that is exactly like Bert. Fine, well, there are just so many human types, you know. I just thought of something to ask you, but I am embarrassed to. Uh, well, uh, uh, go ahead. Well, um, come on, let us get to know each other. Do you have all your toes? Fine, silent for a moment. No. Scrawl, does that depress you? Is it the left foot? Fine. What is so amazing? After all, we have got interchangeable kidneys, hearts and a couple of 10 years from now, we will all be working for 2 or 3 big corporations. So, your friends and I have missing toes. So, what? I do not think I am anything special. You think you are something special? I cannot believe this is happening. Why? He probably lost them in the war, right? Mm, that is right, France. Well, you realize the number of men lost toes on their le left foot in all the years? You just made me realize something. I never thought of this way, but for two or three years before we broke up, he was really turning into a first class son of a bitch. Well, you have learned something tonight anyway. Oh yeah, he really started cheating his suppliers and nobody could collect on him without threatening to go to court. I should be glad to have gotten rid of him instead of, you have got a real sentimental streak, do not you? Well, you like to give people the benefit of the doubt. I mean, by the same token, Bert could turn around and be, you know, warm hearted and generous and God intelligent. Yeah, and then slit you right up the belly. Crawl looks looking out aware, you know, in the old days I cannot remember people being this complicated. Fine, why complicated? Uh, you mean, sure, nothing has changed. I like to get back to your daughter, can you? Now, see, these constant digressions, these constant thoughts about Bert, what do they suggest? One, Crawl's inability to come to terms with changes and both I cannot remember anything and Clara are plays about changes, value laden pass and 
value bereft present. So, the two plays act as a bridge between the two. In both these plays, you will find uh, the characters discussing the past, which was beautiful with all its problems. Uh, with uh, you, you, they talk about war, the second world war, the Vietnam war. Still, they feel that the past was much better than the present, okay, which they, feel, they, they realize that uh, present has lost all the the, pre, the, you know, the present society has lost its morals okay and that is the conflict all about but have that this could be one of the reasons why crawl is um, unable to come to terms with his situation so fine being the more practical type he says that nothing has changed uh, people were bad even in the so called good old days. You have children? One. Did not kill himself, did he? Crawl presses his fingers to the eyes. Nothing to be depressed about. A good number of them did that to themselves during Vietnam, probably hundreds. Our statistics probably crossed your friend and I. It is bound to happen somewhere in on the graph, same as your daughter probably. 9 times of 10, she would have been perfectly ok down here, but she might have said the wrong thing to the wrong guy at the wrong minute. And we are all one step away from a statistic. What does it mean? Uh, no one is secure in, the world, in this world. Okay, we are just uh, one step away from becoming a number, a statistic, because you never know the world uh, we live in is so uh, precarious so um, instable that anything is possible and we might just end up becoming a number somewhere a statistic. So, uh, it should not come as a surprise, but for crawl this is very difficult to comprehend, this is very difficult to uh, live with. Did you ever meet any of her friends or associates, anybody she knew crawl frightened now? Well, let me think. Fine, um, this is what I am referring to Albert. Do you really have to cloud up like this before you answer that question? Did you ever meet any of her friends? Well, I am trying to remember. Albert, it is this simple. You are all I have got. If you are not going to level with me, I am out of business. What is it? You are afraid of something embarrassing? Uh, no, I just, what is the problem? You want to find this man, do not you? I heard something drop on piano keys before. Yes, I heard it, probably Douglas, he is dusting for prints, but I do not think Clara had a piano. This is her apartment, is not it? It seems like it. I am not following you. I am just wondering, maybe I, I should wait before I answer any more questions. Wait for what? Um, Oh, you mean uh, it might all go away, uh, well not go away exactly, but, but not be so definite. To be honest, I still do not see the necessity and she is not the type of girl who, I cannot explain what I mean. I mean uh, there was no necessity for this, I understand. Do you? Uh, but it is Clara, uh, why else would you be here? Um, why would you have passed out cold? I think you probably forgot there is a piano here. But everybody loved Pia Clara, except one, just one in the whole city. That is all you need, one makes it a necessity. You know I do recall now, I played on that piano one evening. Of course, tell me, uh, when you say you did meet friends of hers, how did uh, that come about? She ever bring them home? Yes, home. In fact, this last Christmas, a fellow, I am not, I'm not trying to hide anything from you. Good. So, uh, was this an associate, a patient? Well, he had been in prison, but he was out a number of years. So, she had a friend uh, who has been to prison and uh, she brought him home. And what kind of relationship, acquaintance or what? Were they just good friends or uh, was the friendship much deeper? Crawl, uh, no, I guess it was more than that. Yes, 
crawl murder who did he murder did they say a girlfriend so the friend that clara had brought home uh, he was uh, in jail for murder and who had he ma uh, murdered um, his girlfriend served 10 years or something something like that i don't recall what was his name so this is a possible suspect perhaps he is the person who murdered clara he was already in he has been to jail for murdering a, a girlfriend so um, the detective you know points are uh, uh, tries to figure out whether this could be possibly the murder murderer i have i'll have to think for a minute go ahead uh, she worked at bosford you say yes she in that right they had th their last summer oh they held her hostage had a knife to her jugular and he laughs so again as we were talking about uh, whenever clara indulges in anything risky anything life threatening crawl is proud of her and now they recall a riot that was uh, that had broken out in the prison last summer and um, uh, clara was held hostage one of the pr uh, prisoners he held her uh, hostage with a knife at her jugular but then a uh, crawl is not scared crawl is not at all um, uh, frightened of remembering that e incident he is extremely proud he laughs he just laughs it off and when it was over she went right back in guess you couldn't talk to her huh what can you say yeah especially when deep down you were proud of her doing that right well in a way sure clara is entering with the bird cage waggling her finger at the bird so this is clara's third appearance now what's the use she would always give you the same answer if my works requires me to be in a place he continued mouthing the words as and now we hear clara people somehow know it and they never hassle me she moves into darkness now he sits staring at the air fine keeps going through the file you are trying to remember that name right name oh yes yes it will come to me you are in the landscaping business not for some years now my legs i couldn't take it any more oh you actually did the work oh sure i did a lot of digging in my time uh, pick the shovel and gets you in the knees finally retired now no i am with uh, rajuri industries uh, fine rajuri a uh, rajuri construction road building bridges heavy stuff new england down here to and uh, that's petsy the brother right he had a little trouble there for a while yeah right uh, you are not an easy man to put together are you what do you do for rajuri general factotum i hold down the central office in paukipsi i am with charlie not patsy patsy went away for a while didn't he but they are completely separate uh, organizations charlie's never had any trouble i mean there is no um, hit involved here if that's what you uh, what do you mean what do you say we really concentrate on this names this man's name who she brought home would your wife remember no no don't i'll call her if i can't remember i know i'll get it though call her yourself if you like no uh, i'll do it in a while why don't why don't we con try to reconstruct it you live where in, in the town out in the country in the country i used to have my nursery next to the house what sort of fellow jewish irish italian now uh, fine is closing in he's trying his best to help crawl remember the name of the man who clara brought home to introduce uh, uh, to her parents for some reason crawl is not able to remember the name and fine is doing his best to help him remember now this technique in films in theater in literature it's called a dragnet so clara is a dragnet play where through conversation some kind of a secret is brought out so as you can see that through questioning through interrogation detective fine is doing his best to bring out the name to to help a crawl remember the name that might give them some clues okay and um, it's quite possible that uh, clara's boyfriend 
was actually her murder. Murder. So Hispanic fine. Oh, uh, Jose, Pablo, Federico, Luis. Uh, no, short, tall, medium. She try uh, drive him up. Yes, they rented a car. And what happened? She pulled up. So he is trying to recreate, reconstruct the entire scene for crawl. So he said, you know, they came home. Uh, she pulled up in the drive and got out. And did you come out to meet them? I was out. I was on the tractor blowing snow, and wa uh, blowing snow. Sorry. And what? She kissed you. Shake hands. No, she kissed me, and said, "Daddy, uh, call you daddy or pop? No, daddy. Uh, daddy, I want you to meet who? So he's trying to reconstruct the entire scenario for Crawl's benefit. Clara touches his forehead, shaking his slight head slightly. You know about mental blocks, don't you? You have been to college, haven't you? No, just high high school. You seem like a college man. No, I went right to work. Generally, you probably know we block things. We are ashamed to remember. I know. So now this is getting. Fine is trying to probe deep into Crawl's mind. He's playing the psychological game to get the name out of his head, and the Crawl is doing his best to resist, not intentionally. But deep down, perhaps there is a mental block that's preventing the name to come out, and this is what the you know the entire plot is about. Things that make us feel guilty. You know what I mean? It will come to me. I am still kind of this animal is digging deeper and deeper into the haystack as we sit here, Albert. I am trying. I want to help you. It's just hard to keep. Uh, I understand. They stayed the night. Yes, and Crawl looks at him, silent. They sleep in the same room. Yes, you could have just told me that, couldn't you? Well, I have. But I am pulling one tooth after another. Why string this out? A glow of light opens over their heads. What do you want me to make out of this, Albert? Are you trying? Uh, are you with me, or um, are we going for a walk on flypaper? Louise appears overhead and quickly fades out. Crawl, Louise, good man. Louise, what? But why did I see it like on a screen? Maybe the shock. Okay, now let's go for the second name. This helps a lot, Albert. Tell me if you don't mind. Okay, now see. Suddenly, as uh, uh, this name flashes on the screen. So therefore, this technique, lights flashing, camera lights flashing. This is a, a, a frequently repeated motif in Clara. And suddenly, as if uh, he is seeing a Polaroid picture, the name Louis appears on the screen of his mind perhaps. And he comes and he says, yes, the fellow's first name was Louis. And Crawl is extremely, uh, sorry, Fine is extremely pleased with this, because his tactics are working now. Whatever uh, psychological input he is giving to Crawl, that it is working. This is the, now let us start working on the second name. So, Louis what? What was his name? Why are you not able to come to uh, to come up with that name. This helps a lot, Albert. Tell me if you don't mind. How do you feel about them sleeping together in the house? And incidentally, how would he have been dressed? Windbreaker, regular jacket and overcoat? Windbreaker, played like a short mechanism. Good. And you understand, if any of these questions are sensitive, it is only to help bring back. I understand. Where is your wife all this time? She come out to the car? No, she was in kitchen cooking dinner. So, the three of you went inside, right? And Clara says, Mother, I would like you to meet Louise. She must have said his second name right then, didn't he? Crawl knits his brows, trying. Okay, how did your wife react to him? Or wasn't he the first ex inmate Clara had brought home? No, he was the first. Okay, so this is very important. This is the first time that Clara, who is a social worker, who is a very brave girl, she actually brought home a man. 
and this man could possibly be a murderer and his name is Louis. We will stop at that and we will continue with this tomorrow. Thank you very much.